Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ayushi Paliwal from University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module Scanning Electron Microscopy, SIM, from the paper Thin Film Science and Technology. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. First, we will discuss about the fundamental principles of electron microscopy. Second, the interaction of accelerated electrons with the specimen will be discussed. Thirdly, types of electron microscopes. Next, we will discuss about the SEM sample, that is, how do we prepare the samples for the SEM analysis will be discussed. Let us start with a basic introduction about the module. Scanning electron microscopy is central to microstructural analysis and therefore important to any investigation related to processing properties and behavior of materials that involves their microstructure. The SEM provides information related to topographical features, morphology, phase distribution, compositional differences, crystal structure, crystal orientation, and the presence and the location of electrical defects. SEM is also capable of determining elemental composition of microvolumes with the addition of an X-ray, electron spectrometer and phase identification through analysis of electron diffraction patterns. The strength of the SEM lies in its inherent versatility due to the multiple signals generated, simple image formation process, wide magnification range and excellent depth of the field. In 1981, Max Noll and Ernst Riska at the University of Berlin built the first electron microscope that uses accelerated electrons as a source instead of a light source. However, the first scanning electron microscope SIM was built in 1958 due to the difficulties of scanning the electrons through the sample. Electron microscope is working exactly the same as the optical microscope and expects its use as a focused accelerated electron beam. Fundamental Principles of Electron Microscopy The principle of electron microscope is the same as a light microscope but instead of using visible light, it uses very energetic electrons as a source. So, however, the resolution of the optical microscope is limited by its wavelength compared to the accelerated electrons which have a very short wavelength. This is what makes it possible to see very small features. In electron microscopes, they have very small wavelength lambda. This wavelength can be changed according to the applied high voltage. Hence, according to Rayleigh's criterion, the wavelength lambda of an electron is related to the momentum P 
equal to mv of the electron by lambda equal to h by p equal to h by mv where h is 6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 34 joule second is the Planck's constant m and v are the mass and the velocity of electron respectively since the electrons can reach nearly the velocity of light c then we can use the relativistic equations in this case the electron mass is changing according to m equal to me divided by root of 1 minus v by c square where me is the rest mass of the electron so the energy in ev which is transmitted to an electron is given by ev equal to m minus m2 multiplied by c square so by using equations 1 2 and 3 the electron wavelength can be written as a function of accelerated voltage that is lambda equal to root of 1.5 divided by v multiplied by 1 plus v multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 nanometers for example an accelerated voltage of 10 kV will yield a wavelength of 0 0.0122 nanometers the extremely small wavelengths makes it possible to see the atomic structures using accelerated electrons let us now study the interaction of accelerated electrons with the specimen the electron beam interacts with the specimen reveals useful information about the sample including its surface features size and shape of the features composition and crystalline structure so the interaction of the electron beam with the specimen can be in different ways so we'll discuss the first way that is the secondary electrons if the incident electrons come close enough to the atom then these electrons will give some of their energy to the specimen electrons mainly in the k shell as a result these electrons will change their path and they will ionize the electrons in the specimen atoms these ionized electrons that escape the atoms are called as secondary electrons these electrons will move to the surface of the specimen and undergoing to elastics and inelastic collision until reaching the surface however due to their low energy approximately 5 ev only those electrons that are close to the surface approximately 10 nanometers will escape the surface and then can be detected and can be used for imaging the topography of the specimen backscattered electrons when the incident electrons hits an atom directly then they will be reflected or backscattered 
different types of atoms will result in a different rate of backscattered electrons and hence the contrast of the image will vary as the atomic number of the specimen changes. Usually atoms with higher atomic number will appear brighter than those having lower atomic number. Next one are the transmitted electrons. If the incident electrons passes through the specimen without any interaction with their atoms, then these electrons are called as transmitted electrons. And these are used to get an image of the FeSEM characterization of some nanomaterials thin specimen. Another scattering mechanism called as elastic scattered where electrons don't lose their energy. These scattered electrons can be used to get the information about the orientation and arrangement of atoms. Next one are the other interactions. When the atoms bombarded with incident electrons. Electrons will be released from these atoms and this will leave the atom in the excited state. In order for the atom to return to the ground state, it needs to release the excess energy auger electrons. X-rays and cathodoluminescence are three ways of relaxation. The X-ray is used to identify the elements and their concentration in the specimen by using a technique called as energy dispersive X-ray analysis EDAX technique. Chemical analysis can be done by using auger electrons. Types of electron microscopes. There are two types of electron microscopes. Scanning electron microscopes, SEM, and transmission electron microscope, TEM. These types of microscopes detect the electrons that are emitted from the surface of the sample. The accelerated voltage is ranging from 10 kV to 40 kV for the SEM. The thickness of the specimen in this case is not important. In addition, the samples to be tested, they have to be electrically conductive. Otherwise, they would be overcharged with electrons. However, they can be coated with a conductive layer of metal or carbon. In TEM, the transmitted electrons are detected and in this case, the specimen thickness is important and it should be typically not exceeding 150 nanometers. The accelerated voltage in this case is greater than 100 kV. Since the electrons are easily scattered in all electron microscopes, should operate under a high vacuum. So all types of electron microscopes are basically consist of three basic components. Electron gun which is used to provide and supply the electrons with the required energy. So there are different types of electron gun. The old type was a bent piece of tungsten wire with 100 micrometers in diameter. Higher performance electron emitters consist of either single crystals of lanthanum hexaboride LAB6 or from field emission guns. Instrumentation of SEM. 
the basic components used in electron optical system are number 1 a source of electrons called as electron gun number 2 lenses number 3 scanning coils detectors to collect the signals sample stage display or data output devices and the infrastructure requirement is power supply we should have a vacuum system cooling system vibration free floor room free of ambient electrical and magnetic fields scanning electron microscopy instrumentation let us now discuss the description of each component this figure shows the schematic of a sim now let us start with the electron beam it has two variables that is energy and current the voltage is variable from about 1 to 60 kV and the current from 1 e to the power minus 7 to 1 e to the power minus 12 amperes. These values they are specific to the instrument model. Second component is the electron gun which is used to produce fine electron beam called as electron probe. Several different types of electron guns used are thermionic emission TE gun, FE field emission gun, SE short key emission gun. TE thermionic emission gun. A thin tungsten wire filament which is acting as a cathode to generate thermoelectrons by heating the filament at 2800 Kelvin. So here we apply a positive voltage of about 1 to 30 kV to the metal plate acting as the anode in order to collect these thermoelectrons. So by applying negative voltage to the Venelt electrode placed between the anode and the cathode, current of the electron beam is adjusted. This electrode also helps in focusing the electron beam. Thinnest point of the beam is known as crossover which is around 50 to 20 micron diameter regarded as actual electron source. So LAB6 crystal is used as a cathode. It is used to reduce the spot size and requires high vacuum due to its higher activity. Next one is a field emission or FE gun. It provides high resolution, works on field emission effect when high electric field is applied to the metal surface. Now here a thin tungsten wire act as the cathode wield it to the tungsten single crystal whose tip is curved with a radius of about 100 nanometer known as emitter. Electrons are emitted from the emitter through tunneling effect. When positive voltage was applied to the extracting electrode. So holes are created in the extracting electrode to allow the emitted electrons to flow through it. Then 
electron beam containing some energy is obtained by applying voltage to the accelerating electrode present beneath the extracting electrode. So in Fe gun, the energy spread is less because no heating is required and also electron beam diameter is 5 to 10 nanometers. It also requires ultra high vacuum of the order of 10 to the power minus 8 Pascal. Let us now discuss about the short key emission SE gun. It works on short key emission effect when high electric field is applied to heated metal surface. A tungsten single crystal having tip radius of few hundred nanometers are coated with zinc oxide acting as a cathode. So zinc oxide coating reduces the work function to enhance the emission current at low cathode temperature. Thermoelectrons they are shielded from the emitter by applying negative voltage to the suppressor electrode. So advantages over here is that the electron beam current is highly stable because emitter is placed in ultra high vacuum of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 pascal. It produces larger probe current. Another component of SEM is lens. To produce finest beam of electron with desired crossover diameter, therefore two level lens system used our condenser and objective lens made of metal cylinders with cylindrical hole which operate in vacuum. These lenses are located beneath the electron gun. Magnetic field is generated in the inner part of the lenses to focus or defocus the beam. So the role of condenser lens is condenser lens action is related to the probe size. If it is strengthened, then probe size is narrowed with a smaller ratio of B by A. Whereas it is weakened, then probe size is broadened. C1 and C2 lenses controls the beam current as shown in the previous figure. By varying size and intensity of the beam spot. So the aperture with a small hole in it made up of the metal placed between the two condenser and objective lens to allow the beam to pass through it to reach the objective lens. So resolution is dependent upon the aperture as it controls the spot size. Now the role of objective lens is that it is used for focusing and determines the final diameter of the probe. Another component is a scanning coil. These coils deflect the beam in x or y directions in order to scan the sample surface in a raster pattern. Next is a sample stage. It is a motorized plate which has movement in three directions x, y and z controlled by feeding the value in the 
software. So the samples are supported on it and move smoothly in the required direction. X and Y, the two horizontal movements, are used to change the field of view, whereas Z, the vertical movement, is required for image resolution as well as depth of focus. Along with these movements, rotation and tilting are also possible. Also, stage movement can be controlled manually through single click of mouse. The next type of the component is the detector. Characteristics of the samples are measured at different beam position to form an image. Secondary electrons emitted from the sample are measured using secondary electron detector. Let us now discuss about the display unit and recording system. The output in the form of amplified electronic signal is sent to the display unit. So to form the same image, scanning is synchronized with the electron beam scan and brightness, which depends upon the number of secondary electrons emitted or the display unit appearing on the monitor screen. Previously, CRT cathode ray tube was used as a display unit, but these days it is replaced by LCD, liquid crystal display. Extremely fast scanning speed is used while focusing for observation and slow speed used for capturing or saving the image. Vacuum system. The microscope column and the specimen chamber is kept under high vacuum that is 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 4 pascal. Diffusion pump is used to evacuate these components. So for oil free environment turbo molecular pump is used. For FECM sputter ion pump is used as FECM is ultra high vacuumed. SEM sample. Conducting samples provide a path to earth for the beam electrons and therefore they require no special preparation. Insulating materials however require a thin coating of a conductor often carbon or gold in order to prevent the charging. So sample preparation, the steps are as follows. It is done in order to eliminate the sample charging. The few steps are followed. Number one, charging. A thin noble metal coating of about 10 nanometer is done on the sample because metal film is highly stable. And its secondary electron yield is higher. Too thin coating is not preferred because continuity is lost. Second is the low accelerating voltage. Low kV value of about 1 kV can even scan the insulating samples because number of incident electrons becomes equal to the number of emitted secondary electrons. That means sample is not charged. Next is tilt observation. In this case, secondary electrons yield is higher as electron beam is entering at an angle. Next is low vacuum SEM observation. On decreasing the vacuum, it increases the gas molecules 
within the sample chamber which gets ionized due to electrons and thus on reaching the specimen as positive ions neutralizes the charging so students let us summarize what we have learnt in this module firstly we discussed about the fundamental principles of electron microscopy second how the accelerated electrons interact with the specimen was discussed next the types of electron microscopes were discussed lastly the sem sample preparation technique was also discussed in this module thank you